the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Once considered to be one of the greatest travel destinations in the world, some would even say it was also the most peaceful and beautiful country and had the highest standards of living in all of Balkan history. It was the country to create the non-alliance movement during the Cold War and it was its first member as well. It was also the first communist country to open up their borders and allow western trade and influence. The country was composed of six very ethnically diverse republics. Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Slovenia, and Montenegro, as well as having the two provinces of Kosovo and Vojvodina and the capital being the beautiful city of Beirgad, located in Serbia. Yugoslavia was under tight rule by their lifelong president, a man named Josip Broz Tito. During his rule, he was strong to enforce the ideal of unity and brotherhood within society and keep nationalistic thinking and racial tensions down. Unfortunately, on May 4, 1980, Tito passed away in the hospital due to gangrene virus only three days before his 88th birthday. Many believe that with his death was also the death of the peaceful way of life in Yugoslavia. After Tito's death, the country began to slowly sink into a deep economic decline, and sadly, with the world that is so difficult to live in and obsessed with power and money, this started to make things very stressful and desperate for many people living in the country. The racial tensions that were kept in check during Tito's rule were slowly breaking through the growing economic situation, as well as fears of certain past atrocities happening again. This leads us into the very complicated and sad separation of Yugoslavia throughout the 1990s, a brother's war, where no one is truly guilty, but many were hurt. However, this is not what I'm here to talk to you about today. There is far too much history and conflict to be ever discussed in one single video, or even in many videos. It is absolutely something worthy of your research and time, and I do hope you look more into the country that was the amazing Yugoslavia. But no, today I am here to share with you the better times and memories, a post-Tito Yugoslavia that now needed the voice of the people the people to proclaim what society and government was doing wrong, and what better form of protest than music that moved people, the voices of Yugoslavia. I want to share with you some of the artistry that makes people, despite knowing what has happened to them in their home, nostalgic and pine for the days when they can come back to the true Yugoslavia they once knew. And with all the wonderful music and voices coming from Yugoslavia that needs to be heard, I will be focusing on one world. Today, I will show you the wonderful world of Yugoslavian synth pop, and where I think is a good start to get into the genre. Despite being a communist and socialist country, Yugoslavia was never part of the Western Bloc or any Bloc, and Tito made the country non-isolated from the West. Now with new need of outspoken voices in society, music scenes were beginning to spring up from everywhere around the country. With the rise of popularity of disco, high energy, post-punk, synth-pop in the West, and Italo disco in parts of Europe in the 1980s, it's very clear that these are all very strong influences in shaping the scene of music in Yugoslavia. Particularly, the punk and post-punk movements had great influence on the country's young bands 
especially in the growing new social climate. These new local punk bands started writing more lyrics about politics and certain taboos with very subtle and well-written songs. Many of these bands would be cited as the main influences for many upcoming synth-pop and new wave bands, as well as some of these punk artists becoming synth bands themselves, trading their guitars for Casios. One good example would be the band House Store with their hit Moya Priva Liebal, as well as Pilavo Kazaliste, and the track Cerno Bileli Sivet. This leads us into the very iconic and important compilation put out by the legendary label Yugatan in 1981, Paquet Arrangement. I feel I need to quickly mention Yugatan. Yucatan was founded in 1947 and was the largest label and record chain store in Yugoslavia until it's becoming defunct in 1990 with the separation of the country and changing its name to Croatia Records. The label had released some of the most beloved, important, and popular records of the country as well as introducing some very popular western ones such as Queen, Pink Floyd, and The Beatles. With this in mind, it was a very big deal when such a major label put out a compilation of small obscure bands, ones that had hardly been around for a few months, and ones with such a punk attitude. This compilation features various influential acts from Berogard, such as Charlo Acrobata, very popular for their famous post-punk album, Bristilla Ila Toplia Chovek Viva Cat. Also the band Electacini Orgasm, a group with their own wild electro and new wave sound. They were even cited by NME as one of the most exciting non-British acts at the time. And the compilation had, arguably, one of the most famous Yugoslavian groups ever, Adeli. Their songs are some of the most covered and they made many songs parodying the government and social realist art. This comp truly showed what was possible in the now fertile music scene in Yugoslavia. Between all of the groups, records, and singles that bands have put out, as well as everything off by all labels like Yugotan, where should one even begin with this vast, colorful genre? While there may clearly be more bands and artists that are far more popular or influential than others, I believe that these next five groups that I will be discussing in this video will make you instantly fall in love with the genre and search for even more. These groups being Demolition Group, Max and Intro, Dennis and Dennis, Romanticini Boya, and Video Sex. I believe as soon as you hear these albums, you will understand the love and nostalgia for Yugoslavia. I will be discussing a little bit about each of these bands their history and some of their work, and why I think they will be an excellent introduction to this great genre. So let's start off strong with the first group on our list, the funky electro and EBM project Demolition Group. Demolition Group was formed in 1983 in modern day Slovenia under the first moniker of Gastabiters. The group released two records under this name and created their own unique style of funk. In 1986, Gastabiters decided to change their name and incorporate more heavy rock and electronic rhythms and reformed under the new name of Demolition Group. The group was soon signed to the Italian label Chiara Records, which was a sub-label of Cruisin' Records that focused mainly on new wave and electronic artists during the 80s. Demolition Group would put out two records on this label. The 12-inch Mirade and the album I want to discuss, Mitsurika. Mitsurika is a great electro EBM style album, much in the same vein as other early EBM industrial acts, such as Borgesia, who also hails from Slovenia, is an excellent act in their own right. The album is filled with many great tracks and is a good listen throughout. Such standout tracks would be You Better Stay Alive, Love Street, and of course Bad Gag with its infectious bass. The group's other albums, like Bad Gag 2, are also worth a listen and have some very good tracks. The band would go on to gain a large European following and play many festivals. The two brothers of the band, the saxophone player Yoja Pegum and the drummer Margiaja Pegum, were even hired to play with famous, or infamous, Slovenian industrial group Leibach. 
Leibach themselves being an incredible band and deserving their own video, you must listen. Demolition Group even wrote their own movie called Dark Angels, which is directed by Sasho Podogorsek, who also directed some Leibach videos. If you enjoy old school electro and funky tunes, I believe Demolition Group is an excellent band to check out. Next, we have Max and Intro, two young Serbian music students with a passion for old style synths and electronic music, joined together with a few friends to make some of the most fun, lighthearted, and creative minimal wave synth pop to come from the capital. The duo went by the names of Max Vincent and Intro. Intro, named after his ability to play the Logic System track of the same name. Logic System, of course, being the main project of sequencer programmer Hideki Masutake, who has also worked with the famous early Japanese electronic group Yellow Magic Orchestra. These groups being some of the major influence on Max and Intro. Around 1982, they first began messing around with synths and sampling and will meticulously craft each song a step at a time, slowly adding on new sounds or vocals bit by bit. This was mostly due to a lack of instruments, but also the feeling that this was indeed the way to craft an excellent electronic piece. In 1984, they released their excellent 7-inch EP, We Designed the Future, on the extremely prolific label, Produkcja Gramofonskia, Plosha Radio, Televizje, Beogad. They also had another single, Lo Shiedan, which I believe was out in Yucatan, but I can't find much information to confirm this. Unfortunately, according to Intro, the group did not receive any money for the single on RTB, nor were they given any advertisement at all. In fact, the label had told them to find a guitarist, drummer, and a singer of large breasts for their act, a statement the duo found very astonishing. The group had also recorded more than two songs for the EP, However, the label insisted on going the cheaper route and only putting out two tracks. Those two tracks being Ostave Svi, a great electro track, and Beogardska Devoika, which also sounds excellent and features some great synths. Despite all their label mishaps, the group had found considerable status within the Beogard music scene, and they were very much respected and enjoyed by many people. In 2015, the label Discom, with the goal of reissuing some of the more obscure Yugoslavian acts, put out the compilation, The Future Has Designed Us, under the Max Vincent name. This excellent compilation has 10 tracks spanning Max's entire career, including his time with Max and Intro, and all their demos. This is a must-hear for the genre, and I have no doubt you won't enjoy the well-crafted, unique electro tracks of Max and Intro and see why they gain such cult status with such few songs. Now onto the dreamy, playful, colorful synth-pop duo from Rijeka, Croatia, Dennis and Dennis. In the early 1980s, lead member Devor Tolia had disbanded a previous band called Vrdemi e Zemlja. He wanted to start a new group called Tolinja Funk Selekcija, which consisted of himself and the beautiful choir singer Marina Perezek. In 1982, the duo turned to a pure new wave sound and renamed themselves Dennis and Dennis and soon they quickly came to be one of the most widely known and beloved electronic groups in the country. They were heavily influenced by the sounds of the Western world, especially groups like New Order, Depeche Mode, and Yazoo. However, they definitely had their own unique and tantalizing sound that helped them become an overnight success. They had such high energetic music with great vocals, dreamy synths, and catchy choruses, and they were getting a huge amount of radio play from people all over, they, of course, were soon signed onto Yucatan Records, and in 1984, they released their debut album, Juviase. This album solely consists of hit after hit great synth pop on every track. The band immediately gained cult status with this release and were now topping charts, being in the news, and featured in magazines. Juviase features such uplifting and dreamy tunes like the opening self-titled track, Juviase. 
The track Teflon has a super addictive pace, and the third track, which is my personal favorite, Tvara Set y Osa Minuta do Pet, just has a really great chorus. The group's next album, Yasam La Jiva, is also a very excellent synth pop record and is a must listen to. Unfortunately, the group's third album, Puri 2, had them straying away from their beloved new wave sound to a much more rock oriented one. This album did not receive as much success as the last two, and soon the band disbanded in 1988 and would not return until all the way in 2012. They released their fourth album, Restart, in 2013, and as far as I could find, have been together since. Dennis and Dennis are an absolute must for synth pop lovers, or just lovers of what was popular in Yugoslavia. <laughs> to a very unique sounding trio, we have another Serbian group, from the town of Nish to be exact, the wonderful synth-pop band Romanticini Boye, or in English, Romantic Colors. The group was heavily inspired by the works of bands like The Human League, Kraftwerk, and John Fox. However, the band themselves have their own unique approach and sound to synth-pop, with dark voices and high NRG inspired choruses even crossing over into the electro territory as well. The group originally started out as a punk band, but the leader of the trio, Zoran Shvetkovic Shveli, bought a Casio keyboard, and their true sound was realized, and they became the very first synth pop group to come out of Nish. After starting to play at the biggest club in the town at the time, the group soon found much success. People loved their fresh ideas and lyrics, their dark electro sound, and soon their demos were even being played all over the radio. They started receiving great reviews and zines, and they had a music video made for their track, Tishina. It was inevitable that a certain big label, the aforementioned PGP RTV, who also signed Max and Intro, would want this fresh new group to be on their own roster. However, just as the label had problems with Max and Intro, RTB would go on to fail Romanticini Boye as well. The label quit negotiations they had made with the band and failed to release their album that had already been finished and recorded. Now, with only a few singles and demos to their name and a failed album release, the group sadly separated and made nothing again. Despite only being active between 1983 and 1986, the trio had gained considerable recognition and had held a legacy. Finally, in 2016, the label Doomed to Extinction Records released the album that RTB had failed to release so many years ago. The album was originally recorded at fellow niche musician Predrag Shevchenin's home. He was part of another great post-punk group known as Dobri Isaac. That group had also split up at around the time of 1986. The self-titled Romanta Shini Boye was put out into the world at last, and it was just as smooth, dark, and groovy as they had always wanted. A must listen from the intro all the way to the end, and a must for this genre. Let's talk about arguably one of the best groups that have ever come out of Yugoslavia. A group that has put out a few amazing albums, with one being one of the best albums I have heard and started me on this journey, the classic Slovenian synth pop group Video Sex. The group was active between 1982 and 1992 and was led by lead singer Anja Rupo. Between that time, the band had put out over four albums with their debut, self-titled Video Sex, being the one that I want to discuss today. I would consider this album to be one of the crowning jewels of the genre, and if there is one Yugoslavian album you need to hear, it's this one. The band's other albums, including Rakime Kriste and Shvetje Zopetmlad, are also excellent albums. While not having the heavy synth-pop edge of the self-titled, the rest of the albums all have a very intimate, soft, and well-crafted sound with beautiful voices that is a must-hear and not to be ignored. 
Now, I want to dive into the self-titled and explain what makes it so great in a must-listen. The album contains sounds of high energy, synth pop, new wave, and old school electronic sounds with fabulous female vocals. The influence of the American high energy scene with people like Bobby O or Patrick Halley are definitely evident in this album. The writing is also what helps make this album very special as Video 6 were excellent writers and masters of subtlety with how they approach topics in their songs. The album has many daring and transgressive topics, pushing on many taboos at the time, like erotica, homosexuality, masturbation, voyeurism, sadism, and domestic violence. And this is all behind very danceable and feel-good synth-pop. The opening track, which starts with such an exciting and progressive synth, Detective Ishka Prasha, tells the story of a female serial killer who seduces her victims. The second track, Anna, tells about a secret lesbian relationship and has a fantastic chorus. The third track, and possibly the most well-known off this album, Moya Mama, a track still played in clubs despite being about suicide, it is a high-energy track and very fun. The fourth track, Lucieni Ego Shinya Trava, one of my favorites on the album. The way the voice moves with the sense is so smooth is a track about cross-dressing. 1001 Nacht is a lovely paced instrumental that has a heavy Arabic influence. The next track, Kako Biboya Dasitu, is a track that actually features male vocals and has more of a post-punk edge to it. Then, the amazing title track comes in with a tremendous synth lead and a beautiful melancholic song with an erotic flair. The final two tracks close the album on a high note with Neon Ska Reclama, one and two. The first one has some superb vocals and synths, and the second half is an excellent instrumental that closes the album well. In short, this album is just fantastic, and it kickstarted my own love for this genre, and I hope you feel the same way with any of these artists and their work. As most of you know, I have traveled all over the world on Two on the Town, and I considered myself pretty knowledgeable about our world. Well, I can't believe that I was so misinformed about the country of Yugoslavia. It's spectacular. And I think most of us have the misconception that it's dull and gray, and certainly not a place we'd want to take a vacation. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. Although it is a communist country, tourists are free to do just about anything they want to especially eat. I've gained four pounds already, and it hardly cost me anything. And one of the best ways to get to know people is to travel with them. And we have been traveling with three Yugoslavian guides for the past two weeks. And I can honestly say that they are people that I would like to have as friends. And the best recommendation is that our entire crew would like someday to come back to Yugoslavia for a vacation. I think that we have discovered a hidden treasure. And thank you for discovering it with me.